What's going on guys? I'm Brett Garamella and today I'm going to answer your questions about the Osmo Pocket. Since the Osmo Pocket came out, I've made about 7 or 8 videos and I've had over 200,000 views and people have left tons of questions. So in this video, I'm gonna answer those questions. And if I don't answer your question, please leave it in the comment below and I'll answer it there. So let's get right into the video. All right, the first question is, how do you change the language setting on the Osmo Pocket? Well, the first thing you gotta do is swipe down and then you're gonna press the gear icon and then you're gonna go swipe to the left and then you're going to press more and then you're going to press language and then you get to just slide it down choose the language you want okay that's it pretty simple next question can the gimbal record more than 30 minutes the answer is yes i've recorded with this over an hour and it, it didn't overheat a lot of people have asked when you shoot in super fine is it going to have heating problems but i've shot at 4k at 24 frames per second in super fine mode which is 100 megabits per second for over an hour yes the osmo pocket got a little hot but it's still recorded for over an hour straight with no issues the next question was about overheating and i haven't had any overheating issues when i shoot in super fine mode yes it gets a little hot if you don't know how to go in super fine mode you can look up here to another video that i made about dji mimo app i go into all the details about the mimo app another big question is how do i connect it what kind of connector does it come with what can i use okay so first thing is you have to take off the case. The only other way to use it would be to cut around the case, cut the edges here on your case so that the connection is flush with the adapter. But in most cases, <laughs> no pun intended, you're just gonna wanna take off the case and when you take off the case, you just connect it right there, okay? So you're gonna connect it to the little adapter now it comes with a lightning cable and it also comes with a usb c cable some people have said i am a micro usb why didn't dji think about me well i guess those are going off the market however you can get an adapter i'll leave it in the link below that you can attach to the usb c or lightning cable that will help you out so i'll leave that in the link below so no worries, you still can use it, don't freak out. The other question is, how do you hold it? So should you hold it with the unit like this? Or should I hold it with the phone like this? Or should I hold it with two hands? All right, people have actually gotten really mad about this. I don't know why it's that serious, but however you hold it and it works, cool. One thing that may help is going into airplane mode. So if you shoot in airplane mode, that may help with the connection. I know that sounds weird, but see if that works. I've been holding them both like this with two hands and it hasn't been too bad. You can also get the holder set, which I made another video about right here. And you can see it right here. I'll leave a link in below for that. And that holder set by PGY Tech basically holds it in and you can add a light or a microphone on top and then a tripod down below. But I've been running and gunning. I made a vlog that I'm gonna post recently when I was in New York City with this. And most of the time I just film with this. So you don't need this screen. Your phone allows you to see the entire screen. When you shoot with just the Osmo Pocket, you're gonna see only the middle part, all right? Just picture 16 by nine, the dimension 16 by nine, and you're just not gonna have the two sides, but you're gonna have the entire middle part. If that helps, you can get the parameters for the height, but you just can't get it for the width. After you get shooting for a while, you get pretty good at that, and it's not that big of a deal. If you wanna connect it, yeah, some people have been having issues with this, but if you hold it a little bit, or you get that holder set, it's not that bad. Next question. How do you move the gimbal into selfie mode, and then how do you recenter it? You can double click, and the gimbal will recenter. You can triple click, and it goes into selfie mode. So remember, triple click again, and it turns around, or let's say it's moving down. Here, I'll move it down with my hand. You see how it's pointing down? I can just double click, watch this, and it will recenter itself, okay? Now I'll triple click, and it will come back around, all right? 
So basically triple clicking makes it turn 180 degrees. You could also go into the app. So you could just swipe up. And when you swipe up, you can just press that little turn, that little icon right there in the upper right hand corner, or you can swipe up and press the upper left hand controller and that basically will recenter it. So that's how you recenter and do the 180 selfie thing. So a lot of people have been asking, can you use your iPad with this? Yes, you can, but it's gonna kind of look ridiculous. Give me one second. All right, how does this look? Connecting an iPad to the Osmo Pocket. People don't realize how small it is. Once you get it, you're gonna realize it's so small. So connecting it to the iPad, all right, that, is just ridiculous right there. All right, so yeah, I won't be able to hold the unit and the iPad, like it's gonna, uh, surprisingly it stays, wow. Or I could hold the iPad like that and I could shoot like that. I guess it'll stay. It just seems kind of ridiculous. I guess I could hold both hands. So, okay, you could do it, but I would try to, wow, the adapter just came off. Uh, <laughs> I would try to just use this or your phone. It's just not built. Plus it's an Osmo Pocket, all right? iPad is just so big. Maybe you have an iPad mini or something small, a small device like that. You could try it, but I like the phone. I think the phone works really well and that's all you'll need. Also, another thing about the iPads before I go on is that if you use a first or second generation iPad, I believe they don't work with the DJI products because it's so old. So if your software is really old, you have one of the older generation iPads, first or second generation, I don't think it's gonna work. I think a lot of old phones, if they're so old, like after four or five years old, I don't think they'll work with DJI products with certain apps. I'm not positive about which ones work with which, but just so you know, if you're having an issue with an older, a real old generation iPad or other device, it could be the device's software and not the problem with the DJI app or the unit. I can see you guys out there right now cursing at DJI. Yes, I wish it was compatible with all phones and all devices and all types of software, but technology changes, so you sort of have to stay kind of up with the times in order for it to work. But it should work with most of the devices as long as it's within like four or five years. If your phone is older than four or five years old, um, I'm sorry if you updated the firmware, it still could work, but there's a possibility it might not work. All right, so a lot of people ask about the battery. So the battery is inside. You can actually charge it with a USB-C. It takes 73 minutes to charge it when it's completely dead, but for me, I've noticed it's been about an hour, maybe like 40 minutes. It hasn't been that long. Depends if you drain your battery all the way, still only about an hour. It lasts about two hours, 20 minutes. But I noticed when I shoot, I've shot all day. Like when I was vlogging in New York City, I was using this thing all day and I didn't run out of battery life. So it's shockingly good. And if worse comes to worse, you could just get a little power supply. So give me one second, I'll show you what I mean. All right, so you could use an external power supply like this. This is by Anchor. I really like them because it works well and it's super small. It's almost like a lipstick, size of a lipstick. I don't have the right connection here. I just get, I have an adapter. I just don't have it right here at, the, at this moment, but I could connect it with USB-C. And then basically I could hold this unit attached to this and film. So it's not that big of a deal. This is a power supply. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. You could even tape, gaffer tape it there or just hold it. I mean, it's almost like holding two Osmo pockets together. That's what you could do. So you can actually film and charge the battery simultaneously. A lot of people asked about that. So I wouldn't really sweat the battery life. If you needed to do a long time lapse or like a motion lapse, you could connect it to an external power supply and just do it that way. And I think you'd be pleasantly surprised with how long this actually lasts. All right, one other thing, this has been a huge misconception. A lot of people say, oh, it doesn't fit in properly with your phone or device, just get the wireless module. A lot of people, I don't think, understand what the wireless module is. So the wireless module connects underneath the Osmo Pocket via USB-C. So you put it in kind of like a tripod or a base, 
walk away from it, and you control it with your phone. So the Osmo Pocket's not moving. That's great, you can control it wirelessly, and you can use all the features with it. However, it has a three axis gimbal. So this three axis gimbal is really good. DJI's stabilization is awesome. So why not take advantage of that? In order to do that, you need to walk around. So the wireless module will not solve the phone issue because if you have it in the module, are you really gonna walk around with a module in your hand like this? Maybe you could. I didn't really think of that, but now that I'm making this video, Maybe you could, but it sort of defeats the point of having the Osmo Pocket. So I would rather get the phone holder set, the PGY Tech one right here, and I would just connect it to your phone and have that phone holder set. That way you could walk around with that, like a little tripod or something like this, and just carry it around. But if not, I still walked around like this and didn't have much of a problem. Just wanted to let you know, the wireless module is really meant for still shots or when the Osmo Pocket is not moving. To take advantage of the Osmo Pocket, you wanna use a three axis gimbal to get that nice smooth footage. That's not gonna solve that issue. The phone holder set will solve that issue. And the fold holder set is much, much cheaper, more than half the price. Another question people had was, how do I get it to move in the right direction? What's tilt lock, what's follow, what's FPV? All right, so let me just go over that really briefly. So you can swipe up, when you swipe up in the lower right hand corner, you can go to either follow, tilt lock, or FPV. We'll start with FPV. FPV is wherever you point the camera, it's gonna go. So I'm pointing it at you, it's gonna go there. If I point it this way, it's gonna go that way. All right, wherever I point it, that's where it's gonna go. Next is follow. So follow, it's gonna move over in that direction, but it's gonna be more like smooth cinematic look. It's gonna, it's gonna gradually turn. And for follow mode, it's kind of a little more, a little more loosey goosey. It's not exactly what your hand goes. So it keeps that nice stabilization and smooth transitions, and it tries to stay parallel to the ground. Okay, when I turn it in follow mode, it's staying level. When I go down, it kind of gradually moves. All right, I want to film over here, then I want to film over here. It goes nice and smooth and cinematically. All right, if I swipe up and then I go to tilt lock, tilt lock it remains straight. So it's easier if I hold it this way and you can see it's pointing that way. Let me just point it that way. Okay. Now tilt lock stays pointing that way. Okay. So no matter where I bring it, it's going to stay pointing straight. Okay. It's not going to move. All right. So if I point it down, it's not going to face down. It's going to face forward. So if you want to like shoot someone real low, like someone on a skateboard or someone on a bike or someone walking, or you want to follow your dog, you can put tilt lock and just move it forward. By the way, all these hand gestures that I just used is not perfect form, but I'm just doing it very quickly for this video. So don't like kill me in the comments about all that. The next question is how to go into pro mode, how to do 24 shots per second. So in order to go into pro mode, all right, to shoot at 24 frames per second, you have to go into the DJI Mimo app. So you go into the Mimo app, once you go into the Mimo app, you wanna click in the lower left-hand corner. And then once you click in the left-hand corner, you're gonna to have to go click, it says basic or pro. You have to click on pro. And then you click off that and where it says 4K 1080 over here, click on that little icon above the three little dots. Then you click on 4K and then you can click your 24 frames and you can put super fine. Then you disconnect it and now it's gonna be 4K 24 frames on your Osmo Pocket. You can't do it just on the Pocket. You actually have to connect your phone and go through that whole rigmarole first in order to get it here. I know it's kind of annoying, but that's the way it is. All right, the next question is, where do you put on the wrist strap? Well, the wrist strap actually doesn't go on the Osmo Pocket. Some people were complaining about that, but you really, I wouldn't dangle it because some people might leave it on and then you got the gimbal dangling around and you could damage the gimbal. So that's why I think DJI did not make it on the actual unit. They made it just on the case as a preventative measure to not damage the gimbal. Because once you put it into the case, it can only go in there when it's turned off. If you force it in there, it's not, not really gonna go in right. So like I said, if you put this strap on the Osmo Pocket and you had it on, you could potentially 
damage the gimbal. It is not on this side. This side, you can put the Osmo Pocket in the case, and when you put it in the case, it just goes in like this. All right, it fits in nice and neat. And then that little connection, the lightning port or USB-C port points up and then you close it at one end. I could charge the USB-C, I could charge the Osmo Pocket while it's in the case. And then the other end has the strap. And you just gotta kind of loop it around there. I don't know if you've never done that, but if you have, it's not too hard. Just loop it around, pull it, it's good. And then you have yourself a strap. You can hold it however you want. Put it around your wrist, drop it, you're all good because it's on the strap. All right, a lot of people have asked, can you do manual focus? You can't do manual focus. You actually have autofocus continuous or autofocus single point. Autofocus continuous keeps looking for a new point to focus on, whereas autofocus single point, once you have the focus, you just tap and autofocus, it will maintain that focus and won't change. So most of the time, you're gonna wanna have it on autofocus single point, especially when you're vlogging. As far as I know, that's only in the Mimo Mimo app. So you have to go into the app and then you have to click in the lower left hand corner. Let me just bring it up right here. In that lower left hand corner, if you go all the way to the bottom, it says focus mode, AFS or AFC. I mostly use AFS. That seems to work fine. One thing I would do is make sure you tap the focus. And here's a huge thing. I didn't realize this until I started vlogging and I screwed up a lot of my footage. So I hope you don't make the same mistake. When you're vlogging, this is not a macro lens. So if I hold it right here, unless it's on face tracking, even with face tracking, it's not face tracking right now, all right, you can double click to get the face tracking or it could go on automatically. The thing about the Osmo Pocket, it may not focus. So make sure you double click, make sure it's focused. And if you hold it like an arm's length, like right here, it's gonna focus on you. It's about 25, 26 millimeters wide. So if you hold it like right here, you're good, all right? If I hold it like right here up close to my face, it may focus behind me. It may not focus on my face. So it's kind of a bummer. It's not like I use Canon. It's not like the dual pixel autofocus for Canon. The focus is not that good, okay? The image quality is astounding, but the focus, I wouldn't say it needs a little work, it's more like you have to get used to how the unit works. Either hold it back here or make sure it's locked in on your face and it's focused and then you'll be good. Another question people ask is, will the Osmo Pocket shoot vertically? No, it won't sh shoot vertically like the Mavic 2. It'll only shoot, it'll do panoramas, do all cool stuff like that, but it doesn't shoot vertically. You could actually do FPV mode, hold it sideways and maybe shoot like that in panorama. I haven't try to do that or just hold it to the side and shoot like that. Technically, that would be shooting vertically, so you have to be creative, but it doesn't have a vertical mode when you hold the unit like this. You could just put FPV mode, then take a picture, and that would probably work for vertical photos. Can you shoot live on Facebook or YouTube? Not yet. You can go into the story mode, which is in the upper left-hand corner, which I talked about in my Mimo app video. So you can go into story mode. They do, have, not story mode, I, I wanna call it my story because it's not like the initial pre-launch version. But once you're in the app, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click in the upper left-hand corner in that little house, and then you're gonna click on the plus on the bottom, and then you're gonna go to my story. And basically, it starts playing this music. Basically what happens, you can choose which one you want, but you don't get to sh shoot it right at that moment. It's previously shot video or photos that you can use and it will edit it. Put the Basically put the transition and edit a 10 to 20 second clip that you can then upload to like Instagram, to Facebook. I'm not sure about YouTube, but I know Instagram and Facebook for sure and a couple other social media platforms. You could always download it and then upload it to YouTube if you wanted to do that. I wish you could just shoot a bunch of things and then upload it to social media or you could do it live, but that feature isn't there yet. I expect something like that with a future firmware update. So just stay tight. I imagine DJI would do that. DJI, if you're watching, please do that. 
everybody wants that. Is Decini like or any color mode available? No, you basically get what you get. But if you shoot 4K 24 frames per second, it has a really nice cinematic look. So I'm gonna say at 4K 24 frames per second with 100 megabit resolution, you're gonna get a really nice cinematic look for something this size. It's gonna look way better than a GoPro. It's even side by side with my Canon right now and I really like this, I really do. I, th I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised with how good the footage out of this looks. A lot of people have been asking about the audio, especially when they are vlogging, okay? So you move it around here and you're doing your vlogging. The audio is actually pretty good. I would only hold it at arm's length and with the latest firmware update, they improve the audio and in the shadows for image quality. That's besides the point because we're talking about audio now, but the audio is pretty good. You might have to speak up. Sometimes my voice trails off and I start talking like this. You have to like speak up a little bit. It helps, not that you have to get loud, you know, but you know, speak up a little bit and hold it. As long as you hold, well, any normal size arm, I guess. If you're not like an NBA player and have eight foot arms and you're holding it oh, like a hundred feet away, you'll be fine. Any normal person with a normal size arm, if you hold it away from you and aim it towards you, it's gonna have pretty good audio. I mean, definitely usable audio for vlogging. If you wanted to get that holder set and add that mic on top, you could do that or add a lav mic, but the audio, you don't need to do it. And to me, I think it's actually better audio than my phone. That's just my opinion. It depends on which phone you have, but the audio is actually pretty darn good for being internal audio. All right guys, so now I'm recording onto the Osmo Pocket, and this is just an audio sample. So first, what you're hearing is just from my Canon 80D from that mic. And now what you're hearing, this right here, is from the Osmo Pocket. So as you can see, I only have it about a foot, foot and a half away from me. If I hold it a little further, this is about two feet away from me with the Osmo Pocket, okay? Now, if I bring it close, you can hear the audio now. And if I bring it a little further, you can hear the audio now. So this is the audio, I'm talking in a normal voice. And in case you were wondering, I have this little holder set that holds the Osmo Pocket in place. So it's pretty good. It comes with a nice little tripod so I can put it down and it's easy to carry around. Super light, much lighter than the GoPro and basically weighs nothing. It's kind of crazy. So I'll put a link in the description below. Also put a link to the PGY Tech version of this holder, which might be a little more sturdy, but this one's also really good, really lightweight and easy to just run and gun, carry around. And the nice thing about having this holder is not only do I have this little tripod here, but the data port doesn't come off, so I never lose connection. And then on top, it also has a cold shoe, so I can add a, a microphone, or I can add a light, or whatever else I wanna add up here. A lot of people ask about a barrel roll. Can you do a barrel roll, like the Ronin S? I can't even say barrel, barrel roll. That's a hard thing to say, too many R's. You can't, so you can't do the barrel roll, make it go like, around in a circle 360 it doesn't do that maybe it will do that in a future firmware update you can move it all around though if you connect it with your phone you go into the memo app you are going to be able to move it with your finger so i can just tap here and then just drag it where i want it to go like you find that point see i'm dragging it and it's kind of like moving around and i'm dragging it it's moving back so i drag it and i move it over See, I move my finger over. Okay, so you could do that. All right, so a lot of people asking what's the highest bit rate? It's at 100 megabits per second. I'm not sure what it is while shooting in slow motion while using these other things because you can do 1080 at 120 frames per second or four times slower. I don't think that's, that's not 100 megabits per second. I know it's not, but it still looks really good, so. That 1080 is usable, it's definitely good, but it's not the 4K 24 here at 100 megabits that's like, holy guacamole, this footage is amazing. A lot of people are asking, what is the workflow? Don't overcomplicate it. My workflow is don't save stuff on your phone. With DJI products, it's never gonna be as good on your phone. Put the micro SD card. It's a little annoying. You have to like push in with your nail or get like, I have a little Swiss Army knife with the, the end that goes in here that I'm able to push it in and out. So it's a little annoying to get the micro SD card out of here, but once you get it out, put that in your computer, save it onto an external hard drive. I edit on Premiere Pro. 
maybe you have a different Adobe Premiere Pro, so that's what I like editing on. I think it's real easy, real, really good, but that's my personal preference. That's my workflow. I don't really have some crazy workflow. I could do a video on how I edit videos, my workflow in doing that, how I organize my files, but that's a long video. That's a whole nother video, so I don't wanna make this two videos in one, you know what I mean? The main key is to record onto here. It's gonna be the highest quality on the micro SD card. Put it in your external hard drive, and then you use your external hard drive to look through your photos or videos, organize them, and then to do all your editing with your external hard drive attached to your computer. The last question was, can you use this traveling at very fast speeds? I've held it out the window and I've been fine, but I haven't done it on the highway at really, really fast speeds yet. But I would imagine you can travel very fast because that's what these gimbals are made of. This is a three axis gimbal, much like the drones that can fly 40, 45 miles an hour, this should be able to hand it, handle that speed as well. So if you're on a motorcycle or something else, it has FPV mode. It's kind of designed to be an action camera. So I would imagine you should be fine using this at very fast speeds. That's it, I'm turning it off, ending this video. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to my channel. That way you can get all the latest and greatest videos that I make when I release them. And my channel has been growing a lot, so I do appreciate your support. And I do appreciate the positive comments, the sharing of ideas, because that's what YouTube is really about. It's about helping each other out, being entertained, but also helping others and vice versa. So I've learned a lot from you guys and I hope you have learned some, a few things from me as well. And if you did, press that like button. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. Before I go guys, remember, siempre pa'lante, nunca para atrás.